What's happening, folks? This is geologist Philip Prince. That is a custom model landslide, and I'm going to use that model to talk about the real-world challenges involved with trying to clean up landslides and improve the land or restore it uh, in areas that have been affected by the slide. Now, this model slide stopped moving because the base of the slope pushed outward. We call that the toe of the slide, and that toe is providing support for all of the material up above it. So as soon as that toe developed, motion stopped. Now that toe might be pushing out onto a roadway. It might be pushing out onto flatter land that folks would like to use for some other purpose. And it's tempting to come along, bring the heavy equipment in and remove that toe. Problem is that usually does not produce a very good result because the toe is supporting the slide. And when it's removed, the slide is just gonna start moving again until it pushes out a new toe. And every time that toe gets removed, it's going to move again and again and again. And it turns out to be sort of a revolving door scenario where the toe gets removed, the slide moves a little bit further, the toe gets removed, and there's no stability achieved, and it gets expensive after a while. Uh, another problem that tends to result from landslides affecting developed areas is that the top of the slide, the head of the slide, uh, moves downward as the slide develops. Sometimes that makes just a depression in the landscape, but frequently it produces a, a scarp. So it's actually like a, a step. It can be several feet high. Uh, it's ugly, particularly when the slide is affecting a slope developed in soil. It can erode. People can step off of it and fall. It's not nice to have this big depression in your landscape. And it's tempting to want to just bring in new material from offsite and fill that thing in and try to restore the original shape of the slope. Now, the problem with that is that the original shape of the slope is what caused it to slide in the first place. And when more material is added to that depression at the head of the slide, it's gonna load the slope and the slide's gonna keep moving again. That's gonna push more toe out. And maybe you know, well, we got it filled at the top. Maybe if we remove the toe this time, everything will be all right. And no, that's not the case. It's just going to keep moving again, probably even more so now that it has that added load uh, up at the top there. So, so trying to take a slide and modify it so it returns to the shape of the original slope uh, is not a way to develop stability in uh, a landslide affected area. It's pretty interesting to watch this video and, and fast forward from start to finish because you get the idea of constant motion with the, motion with the, uh, the toe removal and ongoing movement if you add that uh, that material up at the top there, right? So you're just sort of like feeding the toe into the wood chipper or whatever, and the slide's gonna keep moving and the same process happens if you try to restore the top of it. Now, the reason that the toe stops the slide from moving is that its weight and mass and friction with the underlying and surrounding material uh, in effect sort of props the rest of the slide above it up. And if you look at, Another image of a model here, this is pretty close to what we uh, what we looked at in the video there, can actually draw out slope on the area affected by the slide. That slope is now lower than the original slope uh, because the slide has moved and, and achieved sort of a more stable geometry. You can also see where the toe is pushed out here, and the toe is the important part because that is providing that resistance and support for all of the mass above it. So the toe is allowing the slide to resist the driving load, which is gravity interacting with the mass above it, and the toe is propping everything up. Of course, if you remove that toe, you remove that support, you don't have that kind of balance of forces anymore and movement's going to resume again. Uh, what can you do to actually make a slide more stable, increase the size of the toe, buttress the toe, add material down there to increase the mass at the base of the slope. That's going to provide more resistance to that driving load pushing down. And you can actually remove material from the top of the slide mass to reduce the driving load as well. So essentially do exactly the opposite of those modifications that kept the slide moving uh, in the model. Now, will those change the appearance of the slope? Absolutely, but it was the shape of the slope and the resulting appearance that caused the slide uh, 
in the first place. The slide occurred because the materials underneath the slope were too weak to support it in its original shape. So that shape has to be modified uh, to help it find stability. What's interesting about this being this kind of balance of forces is that it can be a very delicate balance of forces and is certainly one that humans uh, can actually interfere with uh, in, in engineering scenarios. So get rid of the drawings there, head to Google Earth. Uh, what you're looking at here is a railroad grade in the mountains of Western North Carolina. And we throw a LIDAR overlay onto that. It's possible to see pretty impressive landslide here looming up above the tracks. And if you zoom in even closer, at this pretty lumpy area towards the lower portion of the slide, you can actually see it's pushing a toe outward and that toe is pushing out toward that railroad track. Now, you can't block this railroad track. This is a pretty critical line. Uh, it's really just not an acceptable outcome to have it shut down by a landslide. So folks are gonna come along and remove this toe occasionally, and that's gonna let the slide move a little more. More toe is gonna get removed. The slide will move a little bit more, and that's gonna keep going until either a huge amount of material has slid and been removed, or somebody comes along and undertakes an enormous engineering effort and tries to remove some of the load from the top of the slide. That's unlikely to happen, and this one probably moves and creeps along slowly enough that, that engineers can stay ahead of it. But it has very much had an active history. If you look at the side of it here, you can follow this logging road grade in towards the slide, and that road grade has been cut in two places by scarps that have developed when the when the slide has has moved there. So there was probably already a slide here to begin with, uh, and the railway cut through the toe of it. Even if that was not the case, the road cut for the railway destabilized the slope enough that it started moving. And every time it moves a little bit, you have to remove the stuff that has pushed out at the bottom, and it moves a little bit more just like you see in the model, right? So this is a real world example. This is hundreds of feet across. It's a huge feature, but you can reproduce that behavior with a much smaller model. Uh, mine's made out actually of, of sand mixed with flour, which is a pretty good, uh, a pretty good material for reproducing rock masses uh, at the Earth's surface. It's another really famous one up in Southwest Virginia. Uh, it's near Narrows, Virginia, along the New River. And if you're from Southwest Virginia and you drive along Highway 460, uh, you have probably noticed this slide, whether you were looking for landslides or not. They call this the Galloping Highway. Uh, and the reason it's called the Galloping Highway is that the slide you see here in the middle of the screen is pushing down on Highway 460. It's making the road really bumpy when you drive along and it's not smooth like being in a car. It's like you're bouncing up and down riding on a, riding on a horse. Uh, this slide is a reactivated older slide. There was an old landslide here decades ago when Highway 460 was built. Folks came along, made this road cut, and removed a little bit of the toe of that older slide, and it started moving again, and pretty much the same thing shown in the, in the model. Every time it moves a little bit, you have to come clean up the toe. It moves a little bit more. You have to come clean up the toe. And it's an ongoing thing. It's been going on literally for decades. And this is big. This is a, it's about a thousand feet across. Uh, so it's quite large. The road cut is not very high, but because slide stability is so much a balance of forces, just a little bit of change to the toe of this slide uh, was enough to start it moving again. And of course, don't expect this thing to stop moving any time in the near future. Now, like the railroad example, it's slow, but it's expensive to constantly have to come out here and, and do maintenance on it. Now, what might be a solution to dealing with something like this? That's hard to know. Uh, it's possible to use things like direct fixtures that you would sort of drill through the slide mass and try to physically pin it to the, uh, to the fixed hill slope underneath. At a slide this size, I don't know how thick this thing is, but a thousand feet across, the amount of mass that's moving here is, is incredible. And it's something that's going to be very, very difficult to control. So you just have to deal with it. But knowing that there was an old landslide here and you shouldn't mess with it uh, would have been a pretty critical piece of information in the past. And geologists today that work in engineering and infrastructure use tools like LIDAR 
to try to see where old slides are and figure out ways to not mess with them so that you don't end up uh, in scenarios like this one.